put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Third movie review. In the third millennia, there are various big problems. The climate, climate, various world powers, and it all culminates with the decimation of much of the Earth, leaving it a post-apocalyptic wasteland. There are just a few habitable zones left on the Earth. The rest is called the Cursed Earth, and you don't go there. These few cities, mega cities, house far too many people and for the space available and this causes a lot of crime. Not enough resources for all the people. And so the justice system has to evolve and adapt to that. Yeah, I know, it's, the, the movie is right-wing wet dream, and I just used the word evolve, so yeah, suck it. And thus, the, the, the regular beat cops are upgraded. They are judge, jury, and executioner, so that they can, you know, kind, kind of bypassing the or speeding up the due process. But you know, we, we've learned in recent years that you know, due process is, it can be interpreted in different ways. And the most feared of these judges is Judge Dredd because he had very, uh, he, he had psychic parents basically. And I suppose that's about it. I, I don't really want to give away exactly what the the direct plot of this is. I suppose, you, yeah. I'll, I what I will say is, an an old threat returns, and uh, yeah, that's that's about as cliche as it, it gets, and that is. A good description for the entire movie. It's to to if one were to sum it up quickly, it's basically cheesy fun. It it can be entertaining if you're in the mood for something like that. But yeah, if you want something that you can completely take seriously or something that's a more accurate adaptation, which I understand this is not. I did do a bit of digging, and basically the consensus appears to be that they recreated the appearance, but a lot of the core was lost. And yeah, I. It's it's a typical adaptation, basically, of uh, another intellectual property. They, as as far as I can tell, they actually do get the story from one of the comics, and yeah, yeah that's that's part of the course. And I I couldn't quite determine if they did that one justice or not, but. 
I could imagine not. It's, I, I usually say that adaptations are not for purists. And I don't mean purists in any kind of negative way. Anyway, it's... It's very much a product of its time. This was basically the way action flex were being made in the mid-90s. It's actually quite similar to Demolition Man, except, you know, it's actually entertaining. The one thing that's very good about it is it keeps to a very tight pace throughout. It's pretty much just constantly moving. There's, yeah, there's, there's constant development or, or constant, yeah, there's either development or action going on, action scenes. And it, even like scene transitions will be very fast and keep it moving. The downside to this, excuse me, is that it really is, excuse me, It's just, a lot of the acting sort of reflects this desire to keep everything moving and keep everything keep everything very tight. There's there's a it also reflects in the, the the dialogue also reflects it with a lot of expositionary yeah lines that but but yeah the the acting there's a lot. A lot of scenery chewing, a lot of ham. The there's there's actually there's this funny scene where the villains are conspiring together, and a half of it is them just yelling at each other. Is actually almost kind of funny. In that, yeah, again, if if you enjoy cheese, then. Yeah, you know, dig in. The effects hold up surprisingly well. There's maybe one bit where the effects are kind of obvious, but on the whole, they tend to hold up quite well. The, I'd say the film does a good job of not trying to do something that it can't do well in, in regards to the effects. The music is very nice. It's Alan Silvestri, I think, did the composing, and very nice, bombastic, big, and again keeping it keeping it moving. The drama often goes to into a melodrama again. The, I, I think they. They kind of just looked at comic books and, you know, tried to emulate that big kind of feeling. And, yeah, to, to a certain degree, they did succeed in that. It's just, yeah. Production design is quite nice. The film looks really good. The yeah, the, the action is quite good. You know, a lot a lot of shooting, some fights, chases. Basically about what you would expect. In the cast. There is Rob Schneider, never funny and often obnoxious, and here very much obnoxious. He is really, really irritating in this movie, and he's in a lot of it. He's basically the main comic relief, and that gets really tired. 
the movie does touch upon some interesting themes. I understand that the original comic is partly satire on the you know th themes of law and justice and how far do you go this it's a very interesting concept which and they got that directly from the comic you know the, having these judges street judges is what they're called in the universe going around patrolling the streets and they are allowed to kill if it goes along if if, if they come across a crime that is you know, to not hold up the court system because again there are way too many people and there's there are a lot there's a lot of crime and so they go into that and yeah that's that's a very interesting concept and the film does go into that some as well as sort of the theme of nature versus nurture and you have various ethical issues, and I'd say it does okay at it. I gotta mention just a few of the actors. Sly himself is, of course, a lot of fun. It's, it's kind of what you expect from him very, you know, tough guy, badass, and shouting, and energetic, and yeah, and Armand Asante is so much fun in this movie. There's a lot of scenery chewing, as I've already mentioned, but I'd have to say he's the one I find the most, um, just, yeah, the, the most fun to watch as just watching the acting. He is just... He does not stop. It's like there's... There, there, you know, good acting is here. We've got a bit over the top. And he's just up here as often as he can possibly get away with it. It's, it's almost like they just you know, said action row camera and he just let loose and they were just afraid to tell him to tone it down because they didn't want him to pounce them or something. Jürgen Prochnov is also Prochnov is also quite entertaining and pretty good yeah, I don't really want to talk too much about his character, but he also chews scenery. Now the I suppose that more or less covers it. But yeah, it's, you know, it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's like 87 minutes long, not counting the end credits. And it just keeps moving throughout. So, and, and there are a lot of nice, a lot of surprises along the way. You know, it's almost, it's the kind of surprises a lot of the time where it is, the cliche is, now for a surprise, so you, they don't particularly actually surprise you, but yeah, it still keeps it moving. The, the movie doesn't linger on anything longer than it should. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.